Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center with Knife AQ number 51, the knife series where I answer all your questions, whether they're sharp or dull. This week, we're talking about a few things, including some of the best budget knives around nowadays. Can you use a bayonet as your outdoor camping survival knife? And what about knives in school or at least colleges? We'll, uh, we'll touch on that subject for just a little bit. Let's get into it. All right, thank you everyone for supporting this series with your questions. As always, leave them down in the comments section if you want a chance to have one of your questions featured in a future episode. And uh, with episode 51 here, we've, uh, we've missed two weeks in the last quote unquote first year of this, but we're launching into year two of Knife AQ. That's pretty exciting. I'm excited anyway. I guess I have to be. Thomas is never excited, but that doesn't matter because we're going to get into the first question now, which comes from Lao Dog M. Uh, I'm just trying to find a Swiss Army knife with scissors and a bottle opener for under $30, and I can't find them. Um, got one for you here. There's only one that comes to mind, and it's not a full size Swiss Army knife, it is a keychain sized Swiss Army knife. That is the Rambler, comes in at $27 right now. And yes, it does have a bottle opener combined with a little Phillips head screw driver there and a little pair of scissors as well. May not be quite what you had in mind, but under 30 bucks, this is what you're gonna get basically. But the Rambler's pretty cool actually, and I think it's a little bit overlooked uh, by a lot of folks out there. And it's kind of a shame, really. It's the same profile as the classic SD, the Swiss Army Classic, which of course is a classic keychain Swiss Army sized knife. You've also got, like the classic, you've got small pen blade and a nail file with a flathead screwdriver on the end. With the classic, you also get the pair of scissors, but you don't get the bottle opener combo tool. And on both, you have the toothpick and tweezers. The reason why I think it's a shame the Rambler gets overlooked is I think it's actually better, a better option than the classic SD. It's a little more expensive, sure, uh, about 10 bucks so in fact, but you'll notice right here in the blade open position, you might not get quite why until I tell you that this is better, but on the classic SD, the blade itself opens up on the same side as the little key ring. So if you've got it on your keychain and you open up the blade, it's kind of getting in the way, fighting with your keys a little bit. On the Rambler, not the case. Your key ring is gonna stay here on the back side. You can even use it you know, with your, uh, your back two fingers to get a little more grip. And the blade's gonna be sticking out the way you want it. So pretty cool little tool. If you want a, uh, a full size option with the uh, scissors and the bottle opener, you're gonna have to look at another model, but under 30 bucks, this guy is it. All right, our next question comes from Elizabeth B. Uh, Dear DCA, I always love a bargain, but I also don't wanna buy junk. Is there a knife you have available now that is the best value out there? As in, wow, this knife is on special and anyone who can should buy it now. Quality at a savings, thanks. P.S. The question is really from me and I'm a girl. Seems rare over here. They do exist. They do. They do exist. I could, of course, Elizabeth and, uh, and all the ladies out there always have been more than welcome on this channel. Uh, I think I have a really good option for you and it's uh, this, this question came in at the perfect time because we have a knife right here, the Kershaw Epistle. Came out initially in 2019, but some behind the scenes, uh, behind the curtain look at the way the knife business works sometimes. When a, uh, a company decides to discontinue a knife, they might work with some of their retailers to say, hey, we've got X number left of them we can sell them to you at a closeout, and so we'll get a really good price on like the rest of a given knife, and we'll be able to pass the savings on to you. That's what's happening with this particular guy right now. We essentially have all the rest of these from Kershaw, coming in 10 bucks lower than the initial price. This is a $20 knife now, and there actually is an awful lot here for 20 bucks. I've always liked the shape of this, makes a nice little kind of prestige looking knife on a budget. You know, obviously you're a lady, but I'm gonna call it a gentleman's knife anyway, because just that's the genre, but just a nice fancy looking knife without costing an arm and a leg. Blade length itself is three inches, and actually when I measured it, it's just almost a, a, a 30 second over that three inch mark. So if you need a sub three inch blade, 
uh, for folks out there. Keep that in mind. 8CR series stainless steel. Again, we're talking a $20 knife here. Some of the, uh, the, you know, the current releases in this range are using stuff like 7CR or 5CR stainless steel. So a pretty good amount of performance on the blade. Nice narrow profile, hollow ground. It's going to work well for just you know, smaller everyday cutting chores. Great letter opener, opening boxes and packages, even a little bit of uh, like, you know, steak knife type of stuff if you want. Handles themselves, actual anodized aluminum in this case. It's a clear anno, so you get a nice shiny look. You know, no FRN or, or heavier stainless steel here. You've got that lightweight metal that looks good and is plenty durable as well. Nice little pivot cover here on the front. And then on the back side, the pivot itself is adjustable. Inset liner lock, another you know slightly more premium feature that you're getting for 20 bucks. Simple pivots, uh, pivot construction themselves, just uh, Teflon washers or actually it might be nylon, I'm not sure. Works really well on a slow roll, but if you get the angle just right, you can do a good pop open as well. Dual thumb studs, nice standard pocket clip there, but just a really great knife, very competitive in this $20 range. Materials are really good, much better than, uh, than the stuff that it would be competing with at the price. The shape is good, very useful, it's built very well, and it should last a lot longer than $20 would suggest. So buy two of them. So you can buy two of them. <laughs> Actually, with uh, the holiday season coming up, these are gonna make great stocking stuffers and gifts and that sort of thing as well. I mean, 20 bucks, lot of, uh, lot of coolness for your money right there. All right, next question comes from William Tool. Uh, hey DCA, what's the best lightweight under three inch blade knife for college? Uh, okay, first off, just so we're uh, you know covering our butts here, you know in a, a school, college, whatever. Uh, obviously, it's up to you to make sure you're you know allowed to carry or you're able to carry what you're going to choose to carry. So don't take this as any kind of endorsement or or anything of things. We're not lawyers. We're not lawyers. Can you tell? Because they say things of things all the time. <laughs> you take my point anyway. But I'll give you a few options here. Uh, the first thing, honestly, that comes to mind is take your pick of a, of a Swiss Army knife. You know, the Rambler, if you want to be uh, be really small. But uh, the reason I say that is you're going to want something that's a little more innocuous because the last thing you would want on a campus situation is some Karen making a, a big deal. Um, you, you just you don't have time for that. You don't need that kind of stress in your life. Um, so multi-tool things are, are thought of much less as kind of weaponry, uh, and especially if the school has a, a zero tolerance policy, anything like that, just want to avoid that. Uh, another multi-tool that comes to mind are you know, a bunch of the pliers-based tools might make some pretty good options as well. Leatherman's Skeletool, uh, the CX model, comes in at about 80 bucks, and that has a 154 cm blade, so a little bit better than the uh, 420 HC of the less expensive models. And the Skeletool, I mean, Thomas carries one of these all the time. It's very unobtrusive, even if you are belt carrying it, but you can pocket clip carry it as well. So it's inside the pocket, not too bulky, few standard implements, you got your blade, you've got your pliers there on the inside, a couple of drivers, and it's college, so you need a good bottle opener, obviously. Sure. Obviously. Um, maybe look at one of those too. Somehow though, I don't think that's quite what you're asking. So I, I showed you those things to show you these next things. Um, what, what you're going to want to go th for though, still keeping to something that's kind of unobtrusive looking uh, and go with something with a deep carry pocket clip, I would suggest. Again, discretion is the better part of valor in this sort of situation. And thinking of like the sub three inch lightweight deep carry pocket knives these days, the poster boy, I think is obviously the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. Uh, out. Mini bug out. Thank you, Thomas. It's, it's good to have a producer every once in a while. Um, the mini bug out, mini grips only would work too, quite honestly, uh, but it's not the poster boy. Uh, but anyway, mini bug out coming in uh, for this orange version, about 120 bucks right now. American made, three inch or sub three inch blade, S30V steel, nice and slicey, very small and unobtrusive, doesn't take up a lot of space in the pocket. It's not quite a full grip. Um, if you're looking uh, for a fuller grip, I've got another suggestion here in a second. Um, color wise, the orange though might be a little too much, uh, might be a little too shouty. 
Uh, but I didn't want to go with the all black one or the, uh, the, the black and white one because they might be seen as a little too aggressive. You're going to know your, uh, your home situation a little better than I am. So I wanted to, to point this blade out because it is really nice. Um, the epistle there that we just showed would almost be a good option because it is, like I said, just a hair over three inches. You could, of course, knock the tip off and be good to go. And then you've got a $20 knife to take care of you. And the advantage there is if you happen to lose it or it gets you know, taken away for one reason or another, you're only out 20 bucks. Uh, my next option is also more affordable, but the Civivi Elementum, three inch blade, deep carry pocket clip, fairly plain looking, a little bit bigger though. You do get a nice full grip for, for most standard sized hands. Larger hands aren't gonna have too much trouble because of the, the shape of the handle either. It's gonna work pretty well. D2 steel, ball bearings in the pivot, and you can get it in a very unobtrusive color like this blue G10 right here. Very cool. Nice thing about either of these, actually, the mini bug out or this is if you want to play around and do some customization with them, there's a lot of options out there. So you can change the colors up, change the materials of the handles up in some cases if you want. A lot of fun stuff to go around there. Or pick your school colors. Or pick your school colors. Hey, you could get the gray handled one right there. You could writ dye it your different school colors. Of course, you don't probably don't have a, uh, a stove in your in your dorm, but you could do it in like the common area. That'd be pretty funny. Interesting. RA would come by like, what are you doing, man? Uh, both of those could be some good options. And again, the Elementum at 50 bucks, you're not going to be out too much if, uh, if you happen to lose it. Um, other one I did think about, just honorable mention, the Spyderco Chaparral, especially the uh, bird's eye maple version here. You've got a wire pocket clip that's mostly deep carry there, slicey blade. The Spyderco blade shape might be a little too much, uh, a little too provocative though in some situations, but again, take that under advisement. All right, next question comes from Erfan Ahmadzadi. Uh, what do you think about the M9 Ontario bayonet? Do you think it's a good option for camping or hiking if the weight isn't an issue? And as always, thank, thank you and all the guys for making the amazing videos. There's all the guys. Yep, just me. Right over there. Um, thank you, sir. Uh, actually, uh, so getting into your question, I've got the M9 right here. Obviously, it's a bayonet style blade, comes in about 150 bucks, and it's very purpose built for, you know, a specific niche of a specific niche, that being a bayonet tactical knife. And good knife, very solid, but one of the last things I would honestly choose for a camping or hiking scenario, and I'll tell you why. Uh, first off, the blade geometry itself really thick and obtuse. It's going to be real good at being durable, but not that great at being slicey. Most bayonets, you know, that's not what they have to do. They have to kind of poke and jab and rip and tear, but not any of the stuff you're going to be really doing in a camping or hiking scenario. Uh, in addition to that, the guard here, including the, uh, the mounting ring here at the top is right in the way. So any kind of smaller detail work you're going to want to do, is going to be really compromised in its grip. Uh, and also, you know, you said weight isn't an issue, but it is a pretty hefty knife. Uh, seven inch blade, carbon steel. I got the, the sheath over there. I didn't bring it over, but it's heavy. It's got a lot of buckles and extra stuff going on. What I would recommend something, if you like this kind of vibe and that's what you're going for, but you want something more suited to these types of uses, the camping and outdoor stuff, I would recommend the K bar, Becker BK7. I'll hold the two up here right next to each other. You can see very similar in kind of overall profile, but the Becker is a completely different animal that is much more well suited to more than just combat roles. The knife itself is lighter. The sheath is also lighter. So, you know, like you said, weight's not an issue, but lighter weight is still good, I think, in this case much more comfortable handles in this case. You can also upgrade them to Micarta if you want. Uh, price on it is less expensive too, just over 110 right now. 1095 Crovan carbon steel, black coating just like the Ontario. Similar profile, but you've got a high flat grind. It's going to slice a lot better. It's going to do all that kind of camping stuff better. You'll be able to split wood if you need to baton with it better because you don't have that weird saw back on the back to get in the way. And it's just overall better, but you still get the kind of tactically combat vibes, which I definitely understand that. Uh, on the note of the sheath, in addition to being lighter, 
Also, I think much better suited for outdoor camping and survival uses. Biggest reason there is you got a nice pouch there on the front where you can add some extra stuff with it. You've even got a small sheath here that's gonna fit the, uh, the Becker Remora. I think it's the BK-13. Small little knife that'll uh, slide right into there if you like. And even with that in, it's, it's gonna come in lighter than the, uh, the whole Ontario package. Um, but again, I mentioned it a couple of times, weight, not an issue, but the blade style is definitely much more versatile and much more usable right here. All right, now we're gonna get into day two, two days lightning round. I always mess that up sometimes where we're trying to go fast because it's lightning and then I'm slowing things down even more by explaining my mistake. Like now? Maybe. Tariq Camille uh, asks, or Tariq Camille, sorry, I'm not sure how your name is pronounced, sir. Uh, what's your favorite YouTube knife channel not including your own? Uh, so I actually don't watch a lot of knife related YouTube, um, especially because since I kind of do the same thing, I don't want to be unduly influenced by a lot of other channels because I want to be able to offer more of an uncolored uh, interpretation or, or spin on things. Uh, so I don't watch a, a whole lot of knife review channels specifically, uh, but one guy I really do like, Felix Immler. Uh, he's a Swiss Army knife fanatic and he does a lot of stuff uh, demonstrating techniques, cool things you can do with your Swiss Army knife. So it's a little bit different from what I do here. I really enjoy his stuff and just his energy is just infectious. Go check him out. I, I really like that guy. All right, Scoob42 asks, uh, hey DCA and Thomas, uh, any tips on knowing when to sharpen or strop a knife? I'm getting, I'm just getting into higher grade steels and I'm working on getting the feel for them. Um, I think just like uh, any steel, whether it's high end or low end, you're gonna wanna strop fairly regularly. Uh, some people like to do it once a day. Some people like every couple days or once a week. Um, I'm usually, you know, honestly, every couple of days and a stropping can be very simple. It could be just a few straps, a uh, few swipes back and forth on, uh, on your, your most polished end of the compound spectrum. Doesn't take a lot to keep that edge sharp and that's gonna prolong the sharpening intervals. When is it time to sharpen? Well, when stropping isn't enough to keep the edge as sharp as you'd like it to be for as long as you'd like it to be. Pretty, pretty simple really, um, but you might get more on your interval because you're using a higher grade steel, so that's pretty nice. All right, China Bama asks, that's a strange name. Uh, <laughs> No offense. Um, are there any true advantages or disadvantages of a Damascus blade over a regular blade on a folder? Um, advantages of a uh, Damascus blade on obviously is they look better. Um, well, they have a different look, more fancy look, but Damascus itself can be made of any number of different metals. We've actually done a, a blog post kind of getting into this a little bit. We'll make sure to leave a link to that. Um, but given the price, Damascus, uh, the layered steel is gonna be more expensive to produce. So you can usually get a higher performing steel than, you know, than a Damascus blade at the same price range. But the advantage here is the looks. Um, are Damascus steels good or bad? Again, it depends entirely on what they're made of. Um, you can get a very high performance Damascus steel blade these days, but it is gonna cost you a little bit more than a non-Damascus blade for kind of performance parody there. All right, Jake Kulina asks, what is the best folding knife that can strike a fire steel? I've got to go with Openel on this. Uh, I've got the number nine right here coming in 18 bucks. Uh, yeah, $18. The thing that's nice about the Openel is they have a crisp spine, so you can strike a fire steel with that. But it's also a great advantage that you can keep the Openel closed and still be able to do that striking with it. Uh, most folders honestly don't come with a crisp spine. Uh, so you'd be using the, the edge itself, which stinks. You're gonna you know, gum up your edge, tear up your edge. I really like the Openel as a striker, as a, a complement to the rest of your stuff that has a bladed edge, but hold it closed there. You'll be able to strike with it without the edge, having any real possibility of slipping and cutting yourself, which is the last thing you're gonna want in any kind of fire starting or outdoor scenario. All right, last question, our most serious question of the day. Um, actually, caveat, I think this was a, a serious question, but I'm just for humorous effect, I'm gonna answer it as though it's a most serious question. Uh, Anthony Muscarella asks, 
Uh, what's the most affordable titanium frame lock flipper that carries S30V steel or better? Here, here's why I'm, I'm going to have a little fun. Uh, you just said, what's the most affordable? So clearly, it's this guy right here, the Bestec Reticulin, a titanium frame lock flipper with S35 VN blade steel. But it's just got a uh, just over two inch blade right there. Is that what you want? I don't know, <laughs> but it is the most affordable. Uh, and this is actually one where it's going to be pretty easy on our site to uh, to search for this thing. Just type flipper into the uh, into the search box, and then there's a ton of filters where you can you know, organize by price and lock type and materials and all sorts of things. And you can really easily find something like this, or keep going up uh, the price ladder until you get something in the the size that's going to be more useful to you. That said, these guys are pretty smile inducing anyway. They're built just like any full scale best tech. You know, the titanium is really nice. You've got ball bearings in the pivot, flips open really well. You've got a pocket clip, uh, but this is also actually a neck knife. They include a Kydex sheath and a neck chain with it as well. So you could carry it like that. Uh, actually for our, uh, our college boy there at the beginning, that'd be pretty fun too, actually. No deep carry pocket clip, but with the next sheath, you could carry it inside your uh, your college hoodie after all. So, and prime for anodization. Yes, and there's some other anodized colors too, but they're not on sale right now when we're doing this video. Uh, I think they're about 110, 111 bucks regularly. So, but anyway, thank you everyone. That's all the time we have for this particular video. If you want a chance for one of your questions to be featured on a future episode, as always, just leave them down below in the comments. Now, if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, we will leave links in the description, as always, to take you over to KnifeCenter.com. We do have our Knife Rewards program, and make sure you're signed up for that, so that when you spend your money on one of these knives today, you'll earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time.